We're back. So Together Tuesday. Thanks for coming. We'll chill out for a few minutes, let some people show up. We're excited you're here. Um, it's Tuesday, 10 o'clock. We are back again um, for So Together Tuesday. I am Teresa Coates. I'm the National Educator for Shannon Fabrics. And today we are um, back with our like back to basics for September. And we are just going over basic sewing with Miki um, projects and some techniques. And today we are focused on cuddle binding, which is super exciting because this is definitely an area that is um, a little more notorious for being difficult for people. Um, I think bindings in general for quilts can be um, sort of a thing. And um, when you're doing the quilting with the cuddle, it's even more so. So it's a whole different thing that we're gonna be doing with it. If you are familiar with binding with cotton, there's gonna be some things that you're gonna find that are the same. And then there will be some things that are really different. So uh, we're gonna go over a whole bunch of that today. Um, I am here. We uh, Hawk and I went away for the weekend. We went out to, where did we, Nevada. The Valley of Fire. The Valley of Fire for the weekend. So that was great. And then we came back to LA and we are back and refreshed and ready to go. Um, so I'm super excited to be here. And um, yeah, so we are here. Leave any comments that you have and he will share them with me. Um, I am sure you guys will have questions. So please, please share them. Um, and he, either he can share them or Ellen will share them with me. Um, and we'll get all of your questions answered. We're actually going to do, because this is basically a te technique class today, we're gonna do a whole bunch of different kinds of bindings. So we're not actually gonna finish a project. I'm gonna have a whole bunch of half finished things, um, which should be pretty fun. So um, make sure that you share the video to be entered to win. We'll be giving away a prize at the end. Um, and also don't forget that our National Sewing Month big, big, big prize, like $2,500 worth of sewing stuff is uh, still available. And you can sign up until the 30th, which I think is tomorrow. Is that true? Um, so you have a little bit of time left to make sure that you get in on that prize. It is a huge prize and I really wish that I could win it too. So whoever does, we are new best friends, okay? <laughs> We're gonna be new sewing buddies. Um, I'm really excited for whoever gets it. It's a great prize with tons and tons of really wonderful products from all of our vendor partners. So um, make sure to do that. Make sure to share, comment, give your questions, do all of that good stuff. And then we're gonna talk about bindings, okay? So binding with cuddle is kind of a thing that um, really intimidates a lot of people. And like a lot of things with cuddle, it kind of just takes a little bit of practice and the right techniques. So we're gonna talk about that today. Um, I wanna talk about the overview, basically, and I forgot to get one of my samples. Hold on, let me grab this really fast. There's a couple of different ways that we can do binding, okay? So binding with cuddle when you're doing like a cuddle blanket. So this is one that we did, um, a quilt that we did a while ago for Sew Together Tuesday, and I just did a regular binding on it, okay? So I did the front, the back, trimmed it up, and then I sewed the binding on, okay? This is a pretty typical way if you were to do a strip quilt, like a, the stitch and flip quilt as you go quilt kits that we have, you would do it the same way, that you'd put it together, trim it, and then bind it. Okay, that's the way that this looks. You can also do a cotton with a cuddle backing, which I love and is absolutely my favorite, and then you could do it with a cuddle binding. So this one is the Lux Frost binding. This is the one that, if you saw our picture on um, Instagram or Facebook, this is the one that we showed. This is um, a lovely one because it has like the white fluff up here, and then the color is actually the backing fabric. So the backing fabric is this peachy color, okay? And then the top of it is this creamy stuff, so it sort of like just blends right into it. It gives it a really unique look. Um, and this one turns out really lovely. This one has a cuddle backing that I did on my domestic machine on the baby lock. Okay, and I just quilted it. I followed the pattern on the front, so I did super, super easy echo quilting on that one. Okay, and then bound it with the Lux cuddle. All right. The other thing you can do, because I am a quilt maker at heart, so I make lots of quilts and I bind them or back them all with cuddle. So this one is backed with the cuddle fabric, okay? So this is with a um, cherry, I think. That one might be coral, I can't remember. And this one I actually bound with cotton. Okay, so you can do it either way. We're gonna talk about binding with cuddle, but if you back it, you can always bind it with cotton if that's a little bit easier for you, okay? But don't forget that there's lots of ways of doing it. So. We talked about in the blog post that, um, that we put up the other day, we talked about some of my favorite kinds of bindings. And I have a few that I really like and I just like how they look. So we're gonna talk about those and we're gonna talk about some other ways of doing it too. Okay, any questions that I need to tackle right away? Oh, yeah. Okay, all right, then I'll put the samples over here. 
Let me get those out of the way. So this is what we're going for is this sort of a nice, nice binding. I'm actually going to keep this sample up here so we can uh, reference it every once in a while. And I'm going to toss these out of the way. Ta-da! <laughs> They're gone. Magic. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to move this. So um, cuddle binding is a little bit different than cotton binding because we cut it differently and we sew it on slightly different. Okay. Cuddle binding, we say in the um, paperwork to cut it at one and three quarters. And some people like to cut it at two inches. I cut it at one and three quarters, and then I sew it at three eighths of an inch. So I sew it basically a scant half inch is kind of what I'm doing, um, and really because I'm trying to give myself a little bit of extra wiggle room. So I think in the pattern it tells you, it always tells you to sew it at a half, which you can. It's just really tight. So whenever you do the bindings, this is something to keep in mind, is that binding is going to be tight. Okay, you're going to twist that around there and you want to have to pull it over. So that technique of having to pull it over and get it in place is often where people get um, a little bit confused, like they think it shouldn't be that tight, but it is. Okay, and it will always be a tight, nice tight binding around the edge of the blanket. Okay, so we've got our blanket. The first thing I want to do is I'm going to cut out some binding. I've got some like basically some quilt samples um, that we're going to do, but I want to show you how I cut out the binding. Okay, so I'm going to come over here. Got my pile of stuff that we're going to work with. Okay, my little tiny quilts. <laughs> well, I don't even know what shape that is, like a weird little size. So I just cut out a hunk of fabric here. This is our Ziggy. Okay, so it's probably a little dark and it's hard to see, but it's super cool. The little zigzag chevron um, design in it. And I really like this one. Hawk really likes this one too. He brought it up. Okay. We're going to show this one on there as a binding. When we cut our binding, we always cut it um, widthwise, okay? So when you do binding with a cotton quilt, you want the stretch. And when we have cuddle, we have the stretch this way and not this way. So we want to make sure that our um, cuddle is being cut widthwise, so the 60 from selvage to selvage. So right here you can see I've got a little selvage edge right here. Okay, so that way I know that I need to cut my strip this direction. Okay, so this side I can see is cut pretty crooked. So I'm going to turn it over. Yep, there's that pretty crooked side. And I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to cut this with my rotary just so you guys can see the mess on one side. And then I'll cut it with the blade on the other so you guys can see the not mess. Okay, <laughs> all right. So I'm going to cut this just right along here so I can get a straight cut okay so all of this you can see it's starting to you can see it's starting to flake off here okay all of this will come off there's just a bunch of it that will come because i've cut all of that nap all right so i'm going to throw this away and i'm going to vacuum this really quick with my handy dandy black and decker hold on okay all right so as i thought we've got a little we've got a little thing happening here Okay, so if you look in here, <laughs> right on the brand name, now you guys know what it is, okay? But you see this where it sticks in here, okay, where it's stuck in my board? So if this has happened to you, and I just happened to cut it basically on a line, but all these little fluffy bits, okay, this, not right, okay? We don't want these fluffy bits in our board. So I can come along here and I can get them out just by rubbing them up. You can also use a wet washcloth, and that'll get them up and out of your board. But the thing that's happening is that my blade is got a little nick in it somewhere or it's getting dull. So what happens is as I'm doing that, I'm shoving it into the board a little bit more than I should be. So I'm just gonna replace my blade really fast. So if you wanna come down here, you guys can see. So I'm gonna unscrew this guy. And then this is the little cowboy hat. It's gonna come right off, the little plastic disc. And I'm gonna let that drop, okay? So there's my old blade. I'm gonna get myself a fresh one just gonna replace that guy okay blades are scary We've talked about it before be very careful with them okay. try to touch the edges as little as possible okay now I want to check this side you can see that sometimes I get little fuzz bits in here okay they'll get inside here so I just want to make sure and clean that out Okay, and these kind of blades, so these are my favorite Ulfa cutters. They're the, I think, ergonomic ones they call them. You have to squeeze this. Um, but what I like about this is that you can put the blade on this side if you're left-handed or this side if you're right-handed, okay? And um, it won't, if it falls, it won't cut you. All right, so I'm gonna take this blade off. I'm gonna big, write a big X on it. Okay, 
so that means that's a bad blade. I don't want it anymore. It's been used as much as it can be used. Okay, so now I'm going to put this all back together in the way that it came off. So I just put them down and then I put them back. Okay, so it's a little cowboy hat. It goes with the brims facing up. Can you see that? Okay. And then this guy goes back on there. The biggest mistake I see is that this screw gets put on upside down and then your blade will wiggle. Okay, so that's the most common mistake. So make sure that they go back together. Okay, looks good. I move that to the side, put that in a safe place for later. Okay, so now when I cut, it should be fine. Okay, so I'm gonna get the rest of this off. Because I cut it with the rotary, it's got a lot of fuzz coming on here, okay? So I'll get that done. Now I'll show you how to cut it with the blade. All right, and I'm going to cut it at one and three quarter inches. So I'm just going to put my ruler on there. At one and three quarter. And I'm going to draw my little line. Oh, right over my ruler. Okay, so this is with the silver Sharpie. So I can see it on the dark fabric because the black will be a little bit too hard to see. And then I got my little blade. So this is the Olfa SAC-1. It's my favorite. So whenever you hear me talk about the blade, this is it. This is the blade. Okay. So this is it. <laughs> it's, it's the thing that makes it all so much easier. Okay. So I'm going to hold this on here and I'm just going to drag this right along here. Feels like this blade needs to be changed too. Okay. Yeah. So pop those. Okay, is when I have to start pushing harder is when I, when I realize I need to change the blade and I want to do it so that I don't have to push too hard because that's when you end up cutting through the fibers on the front. Okay, all right, so now you can see that that one was a lot neater. Okay, that edge just ends up being a lot neater because of the blade. So all of these little fibers that I like peeled off with my fingers before, they just stay on there. Okay, when you are doing binding, this is one of those places that sometimes I decide that I want to rotary cut because I don't want to deal with the stuff coming off the edge too much. And it really, really depends on which Lux Cuddle you're using. So we're going to talk about it a little bit. Um, if the nap hangs over a lot, then I tend to cut it with the, rot with the blade. If the nap hangs over a lot, I cut it with the blade because I want that nap to not be cut off weird. Okay, this one, the nap is sort of going both ways because of that zigzag, that it won't really make too much of a difference when I sew it on, and we'll see. Okay, so now I've got my piece sewn. Put that away. Okay, so I've got a bunch of pieces that we're just going to sew, and we're basically going to start from the simplest, and what, then we'll go up. What size was that blade? It's a 45. Yep. So I have a 45 millimeter and a 60 millimeter, and the 45, it tends to be the one that I use the most. The 60 I use when I'm making like strip blankets or when I'm trying to trim up something large. Um, I have a lot more control with the 45, so I prefer it. Um, okay, so we've got a couple of them. Let's start with this one. So the binding is something that you can do. This one I've just um, spray basted, and it's started to come apart because I didn't spray baste it super well. Um, just some batting in between two pieces of cuddle. Okay, so this is my Lux Cuddle, my batting, poly batting, and um, just a print color, okay? This is uh, Quilter's Dream Poly. It's the one I like the best. I'm gonna spray in here just the tiniest little bit with my 505 spray, okay? Just because I want that to stick right along the edge. Okay. If yours comes loose when you're working with it, make sure you can always respray it and get it there. You can also tack down your edges with a stitch. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew some of this on. I'm gonna start with the Cuddle 3 which is our three millimeter nap, okay? Just the plain cuddle. It's easy to find, it's everywhere. It is actually one of my less favorites for doing the binding because I can't make any mistakes with it, <laughs> okay? With this one, I, can, I have to be really careful with it. So we're gonna start out that and see how careful I can be. Um, and I'll show you how to do the corner on that one, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with my strip and I've cut it already with a rotary cutter. I'm gonna sew it to the back. Okay, so I'm missing the lights. Can you guys see it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Trying to get it so you guys can see and we can see. Okay. So now I'm going to put it on here. If this were like a real size quilt, obviously I would leave tails and all that stuff. I'm not going to do that right now because I just want to show you how to get the binding on. Okay. 
Okay, and I'm going to use these big, huge wonder clips. If you don't have these, you can use regular wonder clips. Okay. I'm going to show you with these, but you can see the difference in how much they hold down. <laughs> these look like little babies now. Okay. So these will hold a lot further into my fabric and hold it in place as I'm sewing. I'm going to sew this from the back and then bring it around to the front. Whenever we do our bindings, that's the way we do it. We sew it to the back, bring it around to the front. Um, there are very few times otherwise. Some people will sew it to the front and bring it to the back, but then I do my top stitching here and I want it to look nicest here, so that's where I do my final stitching. Okay? So we're going to sew it here and then we'll bring it around. And I'm going to show you how to do the corner now. So we'll get Hawk to come around over here. I'll get my machine set up. I've got the gray thread in there right now and my open toe walking foot. So if you are doing this yourself, you're probably not going to have the open toe on there because you want as much held down as possible. I want to be able to have you guys see what's happening in here. So that's why I have this foot on. Okay. Normally, let me see if my other foot is in here. This would normally be the toe I would want to have on there. Okay. So it has this this is closed up more and easier. You'll see I'll struggle just a tiny bit, I'm sure, because this is open, it will move in there. Okay? So just FYI, you just want a regular, regular uh, open or closed toe foot on there. Okay? But you do want a walking foot. This is the um, digital dual feed. It's on my baby lock crescendo, and I love it. Let's get that under there. Try to do that without bumping the camera. Okay, so on this foot, it's kind of weird because you can't really see. My half inch is, I think, here. I'm actually going to measure it. I'm going to tell you guys, and I'm like, I'm actually going to check it because I do this a lot where I mess it around. So here's a little ruler. I can stick this down in the half inch hole. Okay, so I can see this line on my on the bed right here. I can see that line. That's where I want the, my line to go. That's a half an inch. So that's this line right here. Okay. So when my fabric lines up here, that's a half an inch. And I'm going to go just shy of that because I want to make sure that I have enough to wrap around. And, you know, I got to feel like I'm a, like quilting. It's a, it's a scant half. Okay. So I'm going to get that in there. Get that all the way underneath the foot. I'm going to put my foot down. There we go. All right. Now I'm going to pop my stitch up. Sorry. Okay. I got it at a three and a half. And then I'm just going to go forward. Okay. So as I go, I'm going to feed this underneath. You're going to see it's going to kind of want to come forward on me. And that's just what's going to happen. And we're going to let it. Okay. What I am going to do is I'm going to try to keep it from going too much underneath. Okay, so now you can see I got a little pucker there. I'm just going to pull that out just the tiniest bit because I don't want puckers in my cuddle three. Okay, so this will always happen is it will always push forward about this much. If it's pushing like this, this is okay. If you get a lump in here that looks like this, something is happening wrong. We need to fix it. Okay, and that fix it can be changing your presser foot pressure, all sorts of things. Okay, I'm going to get this to go through. Okay, and then about a half an inch from the end, and I'm going to measure it so you guys can see. Half an inch from the end, I'm going to stick a pin in here. Okay, and this is where I want to turn. So I'm going to be careful. I'm going to get this up there, and I'm not going to stitch on that pin. Instead, I'm going to some little rotating here, make sure I can get up there, and that if I start to hit that pin, which I could feel it move, I can just take the pin out, okay? Now I'm going to turn it, and I'm going to turn this entire thing so that the point comes right off the corner now, okay? So now I put my foot back down and sew right off the corner. So this should feel fairly familiar if you are a uh, cotton quilter. Okay, this way of sewing the binding. This is how we make a nice mitered corner. All right, so there we've got the little miter on there. And then I'm just going to take it and I'm going to fold this up so that it becomes the little 45. And it will pull really nicely along that. And I want to make sure that this line is continuing nice and straight. I'm going to put my finger on here and hold that down. Okay, 
So now I'm going to pin this in place because I don't want that guy to move. Okay, what I need, what I need you to notice here is this little fold right here. I can see the raw edge just past that fold. If this fold is over here and I can't see my raw edge, I'm going to end up with a pocket at the corner. And I don't want a pocket at the corner, I want a nice tight little corner. Okay, so I'm going to pin that so that it stays in place that there's a little bit of raw edge. Okay, now I'm going to clip this edge just a tiny bit so it can get me around the corner and keep going. Okay. We're going to go back to some fundamentals real fast. Yes. So definitely a polyester thread, not yes. a cotton thread. Not a cotton thread, and always polyester. Thread. Right. Polyester. Yes. Thank you. Yep. Polyester thread, and we use a polyester thread because it's polyester fabric. Okay. That works better. All right. And we, the needle the, is the, a, the, the needle is a 9014 stretch needle, and the reason we use the stretch needle is because it will go through the fabric better you won't get skip stitches. The reason we don't use cotton thread is because it will pop, okay? And it would just keep breaking on you and that's not fun. Uh, polyester thread has a stretch to it. I'll show you when I pull this out, how I can actually pull the edge of the fabric and it's not gonna break, all right? So yes, in a 9014 stretch, polyester thread, I'm using the Mettler thread, that's the one I like, is Metro, Metro Scene from Mettler and the walking thread. Okay, and I've got it at 3.5 stitch length. If yours is not feeding through very nicely at three and a half, then you can bump it up to four, four and a half, whatever your machine needs to try to get through it. Okay, and if I can use my, I can use my little stiletto. This is a puffy back, like this is the Lux Cuddle Hide. So it's nice and thick. So I can kind of keep this flatter as it goes underneath my machine and that will get it to sew better and not feed forward. Okay, so I like these big clips because you can see how far into the fabric it holds it down. Whereas when I use this little guy, sorry, okay, use this little guy, instead all of this has much more movement. So if I use these big jumbo ones, it holds down a whole lot of it and keeps that all in place for me. And then I can just use a few of them down here and then I just move as I go. So I just move my clips, take one out, go to the next one, okay? One thing you definitely don't wanna do is stretch this as you're working your way down, okay? And that's a common mistake that people do is that they stretch, they pull this binding. But remember, we cut it on the stretch of the grain, so the fabric is already stretching a little bit. So if I pull it and stretch it, it's really stretching. And then what happens is when it comes back, you're in trouble because now all of a sudden it's re retracted and it's gotten shorter. So you don't want to pull as you are sewing, okay? This will definitely give you what we like to call the bowl effect because it will just pull up your edges. It's bad, bad news. Okay, all right, so I'm gonna get just part way here. I think I'm actually gonna quit here. I'll cut my thread. That way we can do another little corner if we need to down here. I'll cut off my fabric. Okay, so let's come on over here. Okay, I'm gonna grab my scissor, just cut off this tail because I don't need it. Okay, so now I've gotten my fabric all sewn on. I'm gonna take off my little pin down here that was holding my corners, okay? Be careful when you put this pin in there. This, I, it would not be, you know, it'd be like about the eight billionth time that I grab this as I'm trying to pull this through and then stab myself. So um, if you're, you know, good about it, fastidious, you could take this out as soon as you use it. All right, so now I've got this little flap all right, this should look familiar if you're a cotton quilter. All right, this is how it's gonna be. Now we're gonna bring it to the front. Okay, so I'm just gonna flip this guy over and we're gonna bring this around, okay? The one thing I do is I get, make sure and bring this underneath, tuck it, okay? And now I can bring it around. So one of the things that I think is um, interesting about the cuddle is if you do it right, which I like to think that I just did this right, okay, that is just about, perfectly a little half inch so you can see what there is my half inch line right there and that's my seam so it's just a scant half inch okay if i do that this has plenty of room to get past the stitching line see that okay so you're going to pull it over but you don't have to rank it all the way over here okay you want to pull it to the stitching line okay so when you're using thicker fabrics this gets thicker here and so make sure that you have enough, but keeping this half inch seam will make this fold over really nice and easy. And you don't have to do a bigger um, 
binding. And that's usually what people try to do is do a bigger binding. What I want you to do is learn to sew a really straight line. Um, and that's really by doing it nice and slowly, okay? So once I've gotten this done, then I'm gonna bring this over and I'm gonna stitch it down. Makes it sound really easy, right? I'm just gonna bring it over, stitch it down. No big deal. <laughs> you, know, you just do that, you just bring it over, stitch it down. You're good to go, you're done. <laughs> now people are like, wait, but that's the hard part, okay? This is the harder part, I will tell you that. It's true. Okay, so now this is where my little clips come in really handy. Okay, so my big clips, I can use them, but then they go all the way past this, and I don't particularly like that. I know some people do use them, and they use them like this, where it holds it down. I like the little clips for this part. So um, definitely to each your own. You'll notice that I did not use a, any pins, okay? And you can also see that this did not stretch at all as I went. So it just kind of will feed along just fine. I don't use the pins because I just find them to be too much for when I'm doing this part. Um, if you are having a lot of trouble with your fabric, like you accidentally stretching it, definitely put some pins in there. And what you can do is like when you're doing this side is to put a pin in every six inches or so. So you sort of keep a check as to how much it's growing and that's totally doable as well. Okay, um, I don't use pins, like I said, at all. Okay, so I'm gonna get down here and what I'm gonna be doing when I'm sewing this is I'm gonna be sewing so that I can sew on here and then just off around here. So when I get to this corner, I'm actually gonna pin this now and I may have to reposition it later but we'll see, okay? But I'm just gonna bring this up. So basically, those two corners are gonna match. All right, where are my pins? Oh, right there. I'm looking for my magnetic one, it wasn't there. Okay, so I'm gonna pin this in place. That's how I want my corner to look. So I'm gonna try really hard to keep this fabric in place as I go, so that when it gets to this point, that's what it looks like. Okay, so we're gonna start up here. I'm gonna show you a couple of different stitches to show you how it works. Um, when we do the other ones, we usually do a zigzag. So I will show you the zigzag first. Okay. So I'm gonna get this under here and what I want is I'm gonna do a big wide zigzag. I do mine at five and five because that's what my machine, that's um, not as wide actually, mine will even go wider. So some machines, yeah, mine goes up to seven wide, okay but I do it at a five. If your machine only goes up to a four or a four and a half, that's fine, you can stick it there. Make sure your length is a little bit longer. Try to do a five length. I found that the length makes a big difference in how it feeds through, all right? So what I wanna do, the first thing I wanna do, normally I would start up at the corner, okay? But I did this backwards and we're not doing a square right now. Um, so what I want is this needle, so come around the front so they can see where this comes off. So you can see my needle is coming down right on the edge of my fabric, okay? So I want the left zigzag, the zig to go here, and the zag to go there, okay? So that's the way I want this to work through. All right, so you can see it's gonna come right off the edge. What I do is now I look for a place on the foot that I can line my fabric up. So I know that my fabric has to come right off the edge of that foot for it to work, okay? Oops, I gotta lower the presser foot, it says. Okay, so I'm gonna stitch, okay? And I'm just gonna hold this in place. And I'm just gonna stitch for a little bit so you can see this and we'll see how it looks. And then we'll do a different stitch, okay? Because this is all about the experimenting today. All right. I'm gonna pull this out and pull this back so you can see. I need better light. Okay, so this is the zigzag, okay? And then what I've got, ooh, I've got a big thread knot over Slow. here. Sorry, bird's nest, didn't hold my threads, whoopsie. Um, so you can see how this is coming just off of the edge here. This was a really good start because this is exactly what we want, is it to go just off the edge here and on the edge here, as well as on this side coming just off and mostly on here, okay? So at this point, I could sort of fluff up these stitches a little bit, um, but it looks kind of, I don't know, a little funky, but not terrible, okay? That's the, that's the ideal. <laughs> I'm totally gonna trim off my little thread, my little nest here what happens when you don't hold your threads. You remember, you're supposed to hold the threads when you start sewing, okay? 
<laughs> okay so there's that so the it doesn't show too badly and it's okay. One of the things that I have found that's really important when you are doing the Cuddle 3 is that you want to make sure that this stays nice and even. So as you're sewing, make sure that it doesn't get pulled because any sort of wobble along here, when you see how flat this is, it'll show. So if this gets pulled in tight, you will see it kind of go in weird and we don't want that. So we're gonna be really careful. Okay, so let's do the serpentine stitch, okay? So I'm gonna take some Wonder Clips off, get this guy back underneath. Do my little extra push there, okay? Now if I look under here, I can see there's my, my stitching line from before, okay? And I want that to line up there, okay? I'm gonna pull that over just the tiniest bit to get it there. All right, now, so now I have to come over and find my serpentine stitch which is always a little bit of a guess as to where it's at i don't know why i can't remember but it's in my like quilting section embroidery section i'm not sure um, what that is 217 is what mine is on my baby lock here okay so this is the serpentine stitch most machines will have them it starts off it's it's automatic default is five wide which i like and one length i want it to be a little bit longer so i usually start it at one six this you'll see this design here it won't look that loose of an S, okay, when I sew it. So this is why it's good to experiment um, because you'll be able to see how it actually works on the fabric a little bit. Okay, oops, okay. So what this does is it does three stitches each direction. So the zig and the zag are all three stitches. Okay, and I'm gonna hold this in here and let it do its thing. Okay, and what I, what I want to try to do is to get it to, when it comes off this last stitch, dink, it's just off the edge of the fabric, okay? So you can see that, so 99% of it is over here on the fabric, and that's what we want, okay? So I'm gonna do a few more little S's so we can see them, and I just kind of keep an eye. <laughs> you can see the stitching line. I just keep it like, burr, there it is, all right. A little peekaboo. I just try to keep it in place and I'm feeding it through. So you can't see my hand back here, but my hand is holding it back here and I'm helping kind of guide it through so that it will come through the machine nicely. Okay, so if you're just trying to push it this way as it's coming through, it's not gonna work very nice. You have to kind of keep a little, a little tension on it in the back, okay? And this is actually one you'll see I'm kind of sewing pretty slow and it's because this can get really out of um, the way pretty quickly, so I want to do it nice and slow. Okay, so now I'm gonna bump this up. Let's see if I can make it. Let's do it at 2.5, okay? So it's five wide and 2.5 long. And we're gonna see what that does, all right? Just really because I feel like so much of this is just, just trying to find what suits you and what's the look that you're going for with your binding, okay? The trick, uh, the biggest trick I think with binding is this stiletto tool and going slow. All right, do we have any questions in there that people have popped up with yet? I'm well, having a really hard time seeing the questions in this. Oh, okay, okay. So, sorry. That's okay. Yeah, the way that it's positioned. So you guys can see it wider, we don't see as much comments. Um, okay, so Ellen can pop them up over there if she needs me to see them, okay? All right. I'm gonna go along here just a little bit more and then I'm gonna switch it to a button, um, not a buttonhole, I always call it that, a blanket stitch. Okay, so we're gonna pull these out so we remember that was a 2.5, so somebody remember that. All right, I'm counting on you guys. <laughs> counting on you to remember. Okay, so is this my blanket stitch? Yes. Okay, so now I'm gonna do it nice and wide. Let's see, I can do 4.5 wide and let's see how long we can make it. Actually, let's do a five and five. That's what we do the zigzag, and that way it'll be easy to remember. Oh, I did it the wrong direction, though. Oh, wait. Can I do a blanket stitch that way? Now I'm questioning myself. Because I need it to go that direction. What is that one? Oh, it was right next to that Not that went, it didn't go that direction exactly. Like it went weird. All right, well, I guess we're going to have to do a different stitch. Because that one does it, but it does it. It's a shell tuck. Let's see it. See what happens, guys. Who's down for it? I'm kind of willing to try anything. This usually what it does is the shell tuck is that it'll pull this little part in. 
So it'll make it sort of like a scallop edge. Whoa, it got away from me for a second. Okay, so now I'm getting to the point here that my pin is in here. Okay, you can see this. And I'm gonna clip this over here a couple of times so I don't lose it around this corner. Because eventually I'm gonna have to take this pin out like now. Okay, let me get that tucked in there. This is when that little point on my stiletto is gonna come in really handy because I'm gonna move this over here and I'm gonna stab it down. Okay, I'm gonna go one more. Okay, now I'm gonna lift this. I'm keeping my stiletto in there. Let's see if I can get it to go over. Stitch, there we go. I just wanted to kind of grab that little fold is what I was trying to do. Okay, seemed like a weird thing, but that's what I was doing. I gotta get that. So now I can see that this wants to kind of pinch right here. So I just kind of have to get it moved a little bit and we'll see how that works. Okay. It's coming off the edge just a little, there we go. So I just gotta keep an eye on my stitching underneath and this, okay? So I'm keeping an eye on this, this seam line that I sewed and the edge of my fabric. All right, let's take that out and we can see a little bit. All right. So here we go. Oh, look at that. Okay, so here's our little shell stitch. That was the last thing we did, which was sort of the, the backwards blanket stitch. Okay, so it usually does something different in cotton and it'll pull this down a little bit more. So I'm kind of pleased to see that it didn't do that because I hadn't been, I hadn't tried that one yet. So nice work, Hawk, thanks. Um, <laughs> okay, cool. this is, you just gotta try all the things to see what works there, okay? So this is the serpentine stitch that was the 5-5. Five five. All right, so this is a really nice, big, long one. And I will tell you with the serpentine stitch and with any of these, because you can see these stitches so well, the key really is to go slowly so that it feeds through nicely. All right, because we want it to feed through evenly. This is the um, 1.6. So this is what I normally use. This was the five, okay? So just a different look. Either one of them are perfectly fine. The binding isn't gonna come off either, okay? They're really strong. Um, so we're definitely, you don't have to roll the fabric back under. Absolutely this not. You're this right here, it's edge. just the raw edge. You can see it's just the raw edge, comes down, bam, okay? This is all raw edge. And if we get real close here, you can see that raw edge, okay? You can see that's what that is. If I put it like this, you can't tell, okay? Super nice, super easy, and we're gonna do that with all of it. Okay, so five wide, 1.6 long serpentine. This was the five five zigzag. Okay, so once you see the serpentine, you're like, oh, the serpentine is so much nicer than the zigzag. This is the five wide and five long serpentine. And then this was the shell stitch here, okay? So that seemed to work out pretty darn well. I'm excited about that. All right. Um, let me see, somebody else did a fancy stitch. So let's, let's see if we can find a fancy stitch here, Hawk. Let's see what we can do with my walking foot on there. Let's see, I'm gonna just pick one and see what it does. Let's do a fancy crazy one there. How's that? That looks fun. Okay, I'm gonna stick this underneath the machine, get it in, get my stiletto again. Let's just see what happens when we try to do a really fancy stitch. Okay, so this one is the smocking stitch, um, which I like a lot. And I think somebody actually just mentioned this one on the I Love Cuddle group, which is kind of funny. So if you're not in the I Love Cuddle group, okay, I'm going to make that longer. You should join us there. So I'm going to do it five wide so still, and I'm going to, I bumped it up to 2.5 long because I want it to feed through faster. That'll take me three days to get through that. And I don't want to do that. Okay. So this is just basically cut, um, stitching down a little square. Okay, and I'm just gonna kind of let it feed through. I just wanna make sure that my edge is caught. Okay. I also wanna make sure that the edge is caught and not flipping up. So I wanna make sure that it doesn't get moved over too far, either direction. Okay. Okay, I think we're almost done. Let's see. Let's see what happened, you guys. All right, it's kind of exciting. Oh, look at that. Okay, so this one was the smocking stitch, which you kind of, here you can kind of see it a little bit better. It's like a little square, okay? 
but what that does over here is it just sort of flattens into it. So with the difference between the two sides, and you'll see it, is the really the direction of the, the nap. The nap is coming this direction, the nap is coming this direction, so it just behaves differently, okay, which is kind of, uh, I don't know, interesting. All right, so this was the back, catching just the edge. That's the front, catching just the edge. All right, okay. So this was the smocking stitch, and it was, can you read those numbers over there? It was five millimeters wide and two and a half millimeters long. There you go, okay. So there's that experiment. All right, so now let's try it with Lux Cuddles. All right, so Lux Cuddles, woo, it's warm. Um, <laughs> so Lux Cuddles are a little bit different, and truthfully, I like Lux Cuddles better because I don't have to be quite so finicky. With the uh, regular cuddle, I can see right here, I can see there's like a little, a little twisty. Can you see that very well oh, yeah. right there? Okay, that's because it got pushed a little bit while I was sewing it. So even though it looked like it was sewn just fine when I sewed it on, then when I sewed that top stitch, it pushed it a little bit, twisted it a tiny, and then I get that little bump in there. So I can see it enough right here. You see that, like where it goes in? So this is why <laughs> I don't like to use Cuddle 3 for my bindings because it shows all my mistakes instead of hides them. Um, so I like to use a Lux Cuddle, and the Lux Cuddle seems like it would be harder because there's so much more in the Lux Cuddle, but because there's so much more to the Lux Cuddle, it actually hides it all, which is, to me, the best part, okay? So I like the Lux Cuddle to hide the stuff, and the Cuddle 3 shows all your stitches. So it's kind of a give and take, whichever one you like best. I like Lux Cuddle. So my favorites that I like to use are the chenille or the heather, no, weave. I always get those two mixed up. Okay, let me find those. So come on over and I'll show you what those are. So this one is one that I did with chenille, okay? And I love the way this looks. I just think it is super cute. And this is the weave, which is similar, but actually has like sort of a modeled look to it. Okay, so it's a different, it's a different kind of I don't know, it's the same design, but different look, okay? Different fibers that are in it. So we're gonna try this one and I'm gonna show you why I like it so much. So like I said, chenille and weave, okay? And these ones you can just cut with a rotary cutter because they're, um, it's, they're, it's kind of dense, it's a dense cuddle. So I'm gonna do it on this one here, which you can see. So this one I did with no batting in it, okay? So you can do a, so, a simple blanket, the so simple blanket we call it, where it's two pieces of fabric and you just bind the edges. Okay, this one was two pieces of fabric with cuddle in the middle, sort of like you would do a with strip quilt. Or with cuddle, with um, batting in the middle, Got sorry. It. Yep, okay. there's batting in there, okay. So this one had the batting and the cuddle, and Lux cuddle. This one was the two layers of cuddle, okay. And we're using the same binding with on all of these. This one I did just a tiny, tiny little bit of quilting on it, on my, um, the baby lock. I just, you know, took it through, drew some lines, okay. So it's quilted, um, and we did that. Okay, so now we're gonna do the same thing with this one. I'm just gonna do one edge of it, okay? Should I do the binding again? I mean, the corner again? Yes. Do you guys, yeah? Okay. I think so. Okay. I think so, that little miter, that little miter trick was great. It's, Everybody caught it, but it's- Okay, we'll see it, again. see it again. All right, so I'm gonna show you this time how I would do it if I'm doing pins, okay? This is, again, the stretchy direction, but we don't want to stretch it and pin it because when it retracts, it'll come up here, and that just drags this fabric up. We don't want that, okay? So we want to lay it down nice and flat. I'm going to pin this a couple times and show you how that works, just in case you decide that you like the pinning better because you might, okay? If you're going to pin, pin fairly infrequently. Um, what was that, maybe every four inches or so. Oh, look at that, almost perfectly four inches. That's pretty darn good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna go and put my machine back at a straight stitch, okay? I'm gonna come under here and lift this guy up. Let's see if I can get all of that underneath. Okay, there we go. All right, and then I'm gonna get back to a straight, three and a half stitch length, okay? Put my needle down push out my pin because I don't want that in there. And then what I need to do is make sure, so as I'm sewing here, I need to make sure that my raw edges are matching, okay? So as I'm going, these edges need to match. So I just have to kind of keep an eye on that, all right, as I go. Okay. Did I throw, hold my tails again? No, no, I did not. 
live daringly, I guess. Okay, I'll have to get another thread knot back there. A little thread nest. Okay, so I'm trying to keep this line in this edge lined up with that um, part of the foot because I remembered that was my, my half inch-ish, okay? So you can see it, it pulled up just a little bit. I'm just gonna move those pins. So this is where your stiletto can come in pretty handy because I can stab it here and let it feed through, get up to there. I find the edges again, stab it, and let it feed through. Okay, one of the tricks, um, if you can move up and show them the little slider hawk, this little guy right here. So if you have a newer machine, they almost always have these little sliders. This will slow it down. So slow this baby down while you're sewing. Okay, I'll just leave mine there and you can see. I can't make it go too fast now. It just, it won't do it. Okay, so it's one of the better things about um, some of the, you know, yeah, higher end machines will do it. Even like, even my daughter's not high end machine has it. So a lot of the newer machines just do. And it's a good feature for something like this where, you know, if you want, if you're typically a pedal to the metal kind of sewer, this is where you want to slow it down. Um, and part of the reason for that is if you're sewing fast, all of this fabric gets shoved up and you can't adjust quickly enough to get it sewn in place. And that's frustrating, super duper frustrating. Okay, so here's my half inch. Okay, sorry, I'm gonna stick my hand in the, in the way again. Okay. So there, I just measured my half inch, stuck a pin in there, okay? And now I'm gonna sew down to that pin and not into the pin, remember? Okay, and see how this is sticking out here? I can just take it, push it right back. Keep my edge nice and neat together so I can see it. Stab it in there, feed it toward that, okay? Are you changing the pressure, the presser foot or the tension at all? I did not. The, the, the weave? I did not, but you absolutely can. So if you feel like yours is not feeding through as nicely, which is very, very possible as it gets thicker, that's when you change your presser foot pressure and just lighten this up, okay? That makes a big, big difference on the feeding through. So for this one, because this machine has a lot of oomph to it, it doesn't have any problem getting through the, the Lux, or the two layers of cuddle and the batting and then the Lux cuddle. Doesn't blink an eye. On other machines, it will totally bog down at this point. So that's when I'm gonna sew slower. I'm gonna lift my, get my lower, my presser foot pressure to lower, to lessen, okay? That seems and, counterintuitive, um, but you actually It want does. Less, you want less, less pressure, pressure on it. Makes it flow through easily. Right, easily. because what happens is when I lower the presser foot pressure, this foot raises. It's not pushing down as hard. It raises up so the fabric can slide underneath it. If I put the pressure, down, it pushes the top forward a lot more and doesn't let it feed through. So yeah, it seems counterintuitive and lots of people want to increase the pressure to help it get through. You want to lower it. You want to increase it when you're working with slippery fabrics, which some people might argue that this is a slippery fabric, but <laughs> I mean like a thin slippery fabric. Okay. So we got the same thing here. Okay. You can see there's my little mitered corner. All right. So I stopped. I'll show you from this side, you can see maybe that I sewed along here, do, 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 stopped, sewed off the corner. Okay? Same thing here, you can see it? Mm -hmm. Sewed along. Now I'm just going to do the flip flip thing, is what I like to call it in class, where you can see this goes down the whole edge. Okay? Sorry, my arm's shadowy arm. Okay? And then we're going to flip it back. Okay, so this part, let me show you on here, because this is a part, when you're doing this, I'm showing you on my machine, and if I were teaching you in a class, I would tell you to take it out of your machine and put it down. Okay, because this, you can actually see what's happening. So this line goes all the way up. That's the way you want it to be. When I sewed it, it looked like this. I just pull it up. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stab my, not stab, but I'm gonna hold my stiletto down real hard here, and I'm gonna pull this fabric back. Okay, so now I've got it where I want to, and I'm gonna pinch it with my fingers and I'm gonna grab a pin, and then I'm gonna pin it right here. Okay, because I wanna keep, you remember, this little uh, fold here, and I'm gonna keep the raw edges together here. So I've got the two raw edges, the fold, more raw edge, all right? So here, to keep this in place, I'm gonna pin this, or clip it. I'm gonna clip a couple of these, and we'll do the rest of that corner, okay? All right, so now we'll come back over. I'll stick it in my machine. I use my stiletto and get it shoved underneath there. OK, 
okay? When I start sewing, you can see it's not, I'm not starting back here or here and then letting my fabric flow in. I stick my fabric all the way underneath it first, okay? Then I'll put my foot down and then I'll start sewing because I want it to catch it, okay? If you start sewing before that, it's less likely to move forward, okay? So I'm just gonna start sewing, move my clips out of the way, okay? And again, if this is annoying to you, you can totally shove this stuff underneath, okay? And then you can see that edge real nicely. Okay, and I'm just gonna sew right along here. Okay, and when you're doing this, especially if you're a newbie, just really, really take your time, like oompa doompa doompa doom. Okay, really just go nice and slow and you'll start to see how the fabric behaves. Um, we're just gonna sew all the way along here so we can get that. Okay, all right. So now we're gonna do the same thing as I did before. I'm gonna take the pin out. All right, so over here, I'm gonna take the pin out and now I've got my little corner. Okay, so I sewed this one on to this side. We're gonna sew it on to the back. You could have this it would be your back and this could be your front. It doesn't really matter. I was just sewing it on, okay? But you, if this were your back, this would be your front. So make sure that you're cognizant of which way your fabric is gonna go. Okay, we'll see how well it turns out. Okay, so now one of the things you wanna do is you make sure that you pull this out, okay? And then this gets tucked in nice and flat. Okay, so now I'm gonna come along here and I'm gonna do some pin or some clipping. So I'm grab that. Cause I just wanna clip this in place before I start working with it. Okay, pull that over, clip it. And I'm gonna do the same thing, but this one I'm gonna use a zigzag and I'm always gonna use a zigzag on the Lux. All right. And I'm actually gonna, um, yeah, we'll do the corner. Okay. So usually I would just do this one edge but I'm gonna do the corner so you guys can see it on the Lux too, because the other one I have to show you isn't with a corner. So this one I can feel, this got a little bit wide here. Where's my little, I had a handy dandy ruler, there it is. Okay, this one I can feel it got wide. Okay, so here is the line for my half inch. It's on the, it's on the mark right now, and you can see I have a little bit of green over the edge, okay? And that, you know how I could tell that so quickly is because when I pulled this over, it doesn't want to go all the way really easily. So I'm just going to yank that over. And it's going to go there whether it wants to or not. Okay, it's just going to have to go there. So when I'm sewing that, because I have to pull this over, I'm going to have to be really careful about yanking that as I go. Okay, it will be fine. So remember this side, I got a little bit slow or a little bit sloppy and it's a little short, okay? So we'll see how that turns out in comparison. <laughs> All right. Okay, so I'm gonna get this in again. Get that shoved underneath there. Okay, so this is when we have a little bit of what I like to call blind sewing. Okay, I'm gonna take my pin out. The edge is, is real hard for me and you to see. Okay, so here's, here's the cut edge. There's my seam line. I want these two to match up as I'm sewing. So we're gonna try to make this happen. Hawk and I are gonna do a little tango here around the machine <laughs> while he tries to show you and I try to try to see. Okay, so again, it's five five stitch length for a zigzag and I am just trying to aim this stitching line toward the edge of the foot and getting that on the edge of it. So really what I'm looking at is here and aiming that forward Okay, I have to pull this nice and tight, remember, because I sewed it just the tiniest bit too wide. Okay, so I'm gonna, I actually have to like, so if you can see, I've got my stiletto and I'm gonna yank it over here. I'm gonna put it in place. Okay, so sometimes when you're learning how to do this, this is, um, I guess a little bit scary to do is to kind of force it to be there because you're like, but it doesn't wanna go. You're like, that's fine, we'll make it go there, okay. And nine times out of 10, it will work just fine. Okay, and I'm still just keeping an eye on this line down here and where it's going in toward my machine. Okay, so now this corner is a little bit funkier because I can't see quite as well, right? I can't get my miter quite as nice. But what that does is allows me to not be quite as perfect. Okay, so I'm just gonna hold this down 
I'm going to bring this up and I'm going to stab through with my stiletto. So if you want to, you can get this pinned and you can stab it there and that'll help sort of guide you. Okay, and then as we get close here, I really do recommend that you use your, um, the hand crank over on the side to make sure that you're not sewing over your pins. Okay, so I just pivot, put that back down. I really can't tell if I'm in the right place or not, but I'm just gonna keep going and hope for the best. Okay, because what we're doing down here is I am aiming for this raw edge, okay, to go right on that line, I think. Okay. So I'm just gonna still kind of just eyeball it, hope for the best. Okay, take my clips out as I go. Okay, and so this, this one here is, um, like I said, this is the weave and we have this one in a bunch of colors. Um, and the uh, chenille works basically the exact same way. It just doesn't have the modeling of colors. And I think that one we have a lot more colors in. It really is my favorite though for binding. You'll see why, it's just, it's super forgiving. Okay, and just stab it and sew, stab it and sew. Okay, just a little bit more, okay. All right, someone asked, will you show how to join your ends? I can show how to do that. Okay, now I'm gonna clip my threads and we'll bring it back over here. Okay, all right. Here we go, ta-da. Okay, so now this is all sewn. If you get in here really close, you still have a really hard time seeing the, um, the zigzags in it, okay? It's still really difficult to see that. Um, and that's kind of my favorite part, because now if I just go over this and flip it up a little bit, the edge is basically completely hidden, okay? Now we're gonna flip it over to the other side. We'll see how that side turned out. Ta-da! So here I can see the zigzags just a little bit better, but I'm still gonna, well, because I want to hide them. So I'm gonna totally fluff up my stitches with these, the little stiletto here. And you can see I'm just kind of rubbing it across it. It's not even anything fancy, and I definitely don't do one stitch at a time. Somebody asked me that. Do you go under each stitch? I was like, oh no, no, no. I would be there for five years for each blanket. That would be terrible. Okay, look at that. Nice. Do you hold the tail Great. threads or do you use the sacrificial starter? Um, I actually like to, when I'm, when I'm sewing for myself, I tend to use uh, leaders and enders. Yeah, so I tend to use a starter and I have a few of them downstairs um, that I use. I start sewing with and then get going. Um, up here, I tend to just go. Um, <laughs> because <laughs> I forget to hold the tails. You should use something though, it does, it does prevent that thing. So, and especially on some machines, like on the um, Bernina that I have downstairs, I have to use a leader and ender or it doesn't work as well. It likes to suck it down. So I have to use, um, I have to use the leader ender, the, um, what do we call it? The tail threads, all that good stuff. Okay. Um, all right, look at that. It's so beautiful, you guys. This is really like, this is honestly like it's my favorite kind of binding. Like all the stitches are gone. It's super fluffy. It's full. It's yummy. I love it. Okay. And this is nice and um, thick. If you can, how can you, do you have a hand you can, you can hold? So pinch this one and then pinch this one. You can feel the difference in the thickness. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, so this is because this got kind of shoved in on itself. I just wanted somebody else to verify that it does feel got thicker, it. right? Okay. Um, and that's because it got pushed in to make that binding fit. So basically okay? press the end seam open inside of the inside Kind of, the binding. of, it just, yeah, shoves it all in there real tight. Right. Um, where this is nice and flat. Um, I can tell a difference. You can't see a difference visually, and I'm sure that nobody's gonna grab your, my blanket and be like, this feels just slightly thicker. Um, and if they do, I'm never making something for them again. So there's that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so then let's do this one. So this is the one that everybody loved on that other little blanket. This is a frost, okay? So the back of it is a, um, a color and then it fades up into white at the top. All right, so we'll do this on here just to show you how that works. Um, maybe I can get two on this side and then we'll show how to do the tails. Okay, I'm gonna try to do that. And so I'm just gonna sew just a little bit just to show you how it works um, slightly differently, okay? I'm gonna pin these because I want that to stay where I'm putting it. 
So like I said, normally I just, <clears throat> excuse me, I normally I just use clips, but um, this one I'm going to use pins here because I want it to start and stop there. We're going to leave this tiny little tail. It's not very much, but maybe it'll work. And also something on the other end. We can show how to join the tails. Okay. Sorry guys, my new screen orientation, I'm missing so many questions and Sorry. Uh, I have a choice. I either get to show you on screen or I get to see your questions. So hopefully Ellen can help forward some questions. Yeah, please do, because yeah, we can't see them. Um, we're, we're going with a, with a, a portrait, or I'm sorry, a landscape. Right, yeah. so you guys can hopefully see better. So, oopsie, that's a, not a straight stitch. So yeah, so if you, if you prefer the other way, let us know. Um, we had some people ask for it to be wide, so that's what we're doing giving it a shot. Okay, so I am just getting this edge and I'm just sewing it down. Okay, half inch, move my wonder clip and I'm just making sure that this edge matches. You can see I do it this way because all of my nap, you can see runs this direction. Go get some of the extra nap off there. Ta -da. Okay, so this edge is actually really easy to sew because I can see that clean edge. You're going to see when we come around to the other side, all of that nap will kind of be in the way, for lack of a nicer way of putting it. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to clip my thread. I'm over here. Okay. So now you can see. So this is one of those things that when you're dealing with this, like I vacuumed this off. You watched me do it this morning. Okay. I vacuumed it. I cleaned it. I cut it with the blade. I still have some stuff coming off here. So if you're just kind of gentle with it, you can pull it off and throw it away. Um, the less you flip it around, the better. Okay. So now you can see how that worked, right? Now I'm going to bring that around to the front. Okay. So now this is where it gets funky because where I'm sewing is way back over here. Okay, when I flip this over, what you see is all of that fluff. So this is where it gets weird, okay? So this is truly blind sewing. So if you want to do this, it's abs I mean, obviously it's absolutely possible. I did that whole little quilt in it, okay? But this is what the, what the difference is. So when you have a tighter nap, it's a little bit easier to see the edge. When you have the long nap, it's fluffier, um, but a little harder to see the edge. And when I say a little harder, I mean a lot. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna come under here. I'm gonna get that in this. So like I said, normally I start at corners. This one doesn't really have corners like normal because I'm just stitching. Okay, so I'm gonna look under here. Here's my raw edge. Okay, the edge of that. I'm going to shove it down in place and put my foot down. Okay, did I get unthreaded? I did. Oh, that was a good catch now. That could have been a, a painful moment two minutes from now. In 30 seconds from now, I'd be sad. Okay, <laughs> all right. Look at that. Stronger reading glasses. I can thread it better now. <laughs> okay, so now I'm looking at my raw edge, my seam line. And I'm going to pin it in place. Except I have to switch it back to a zigzag. Okay. All right. So now what I do is I'm going to push this over to the side so I can see it. And then I'm going to sew it. Okay. And usually what I do is I kind of do it a little bit at a time. And then I'll sort of reposition. Check it again. See, did it work? Okay, good. I think so. Stab it down again. Okay, so this one I'm just going to stab it and make sure that it's working here. I can see it along that line and I'm going to stab this in place and I'm just going to aim for my stiletto. Okay, so I do this either way, but I'll be really careful about it or just sort of just aim. Just go and see what happens. Okay. All right, so now flip that. We'll see how that worked out. Okay, so now you can see it smashes this down. So you can see here's my here's my zigzag. All right. I caught the caught the edge. It looks like I can pull this up. So there it caught a little bit funky. Okay. But not bad. And then I can come along here. Fluff that up and then all my stitches went away. Okay? So the biggest trick with this is just taking your time with that. 
because you really can't see. So don't expect that somehow I did it in this miraculous way that I could see the edge. <laughs> I can't. Um, I just sew and hope for the best, okay? So we had a question um, somebody had, I think, emailed earlier that what if you do this and then you do this later and you realize like you've got a hole here, you've got a little pocket because you missed a spot because you can't see what you're sewing. So it's really easy to do that. If you miss a spot and you have to go back and fix it and you've got all of your binding done, just go back over and zigzag that and make sure to hold the fabric down really well and then do your zigzag on top of it again okay and then fluff those stitches out real well and that should be fine so on the back this is what it did on the back looks real funky okay so all the nap is going all these different ways okay so then I this one I just I have to fix more to make it look suitable um, but it totally does look at that ta-da Ta-da, it's great, okay? Super nice, happy with that. All right, there was another one I was gonna use. That one, okay, okay. Let's do the Ziggy over here. And then uh, I'll show you how to combine the ends, okay? okay? All right, and I'm just gonna stitch a little bit on. So I'm gonna pin just a little, and you can see I'm not stretching. Okay, just gonna get that nice and flat. I'm gonna stick a little wonder clip in the middle so I don't lose it. Okay, all my edges are even, and then I'm just gonna do a straight stitch, and then we'll zigzag it down from the front, and I'll show you what the ziggy looks like then. Okay. All right, so do the same thing, whoops. Okay, so when you see extra fluff on yours, make sure that you get it out before sticking it in the machine. The more fluff you can remove, um, the less problems you'll have with it getting in your machine. Okay, all right, now we're gonna switch to a zigzag again. And I'm gonna up that to a 3.5. Okay, so we always wanna lengthen our stitches. We'll make it a lot easier. Okay, and I can just keep that edge over there. Okay. I can stitch kind of fast because <laughs> I've done this a few times. Um, the the um, uh, what's the what's the word I'm thinking of? The more uh, stable the backing, the easier it is to sew fast too. And some of them are more stable than others. Okay, so you'll sort of get that as you're as you're playing with them. You'll see the difference. So now we've gotten this sewn down. Okay, so this one I'm actually going to take out some stitches if I can find. So this is my little blade. Okay, so I'm gonna take some of these out so I can join the tails um, the right way. And I'm just gonna pull this up and then just sort of cut at the stitches underneath. Okay, so I'm not gonna try to find the zigzags, I'm just gonna cut the thread. Okay, and this is important because if you're trying to find the zigzags, you're gonna, it's just gonna be a lot of hassle for you. Okay, all right, so now I've got a tail on either end that I can combine. All right, so we're ready for this, guys. Here's your combining. Normally, like 99.9% .9 of the time, these would be the same fabric, okay? <laughs> so we're doing it with two different fabrics, so it should be a little bit funky. All right, so I'm gonna lay my tail out. What I want to do is I want to lay one up, and I want to lay one down. I might try this with the, the um, this to show you too. So this is what this looks like. Okay, is that one is gonna go, oops, light this way. One is gonna go up, okay? So that's what this is doing. And this one is going down. Well, like this. Okay, so th they both need to be at 45 degree angles, one up, one down, okay? These are just extra fluffy, so I wanted to show you, make sure you understood what, this, what was happening here, okay? So you're just gonna, lay them one up one down okay so i have a really weird thing that i do with this and it seems to work um work really well for me okay as i hold these two in place and i'm going to stick my pin underneath this fold and i'm going to come over and i'm going to grab this fold okay i'm going to lay this over i'm going to pull that up i think i got it yes okay so now i've got these two pinned together so it's kind of a a lazy way of pinning, um, and it's not exactly purely accurate. If you were trying to do this with a cotton quilt, it would never work. Just so you know, don't try it, okay? 
will only work with cuddle bindings. Okay, so I'm going to do that and then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to pin it over here. So now what I need to do, so what I did with this pin is I just pinned it where I need to sew it. So I'm going to pin or sew from here to here, this corner. All right, so let me give that a try. I wish I had two pieces of the cuddle. I mean, C3. I don't think I have them though. Okay. So now this is always the trickiest part. So leaving the longest tails that you can is important. Okay, leave at least eight inches of tail so that you can do this part and not get um, frustrated that all of this quilt has to be up here because this is the only gap that I've got going. Okay, so if you, have, if you have a six inch gap between here, you have a lot of fabric right here. If I have a 12 inch gap here, I have a lot of room to move. Where here I, like, I have a smallish one, but this is okay. So what I'm gonna do, I'm on a straight stitch still, and I'm gonna sew from corner to corner. This is weird because I can't see this fabric over here. So I just sort of have to feel it, and I'm actually gonna stick a pin in where those meet and move that a little bit because I want to be able to sew without taking my pins out until I get to this pin. Okay, so I'm gonna start in. I'm gonna backstitch because this would be a point that we really wanna make sure I'm backstitch. The rest of it I actually don't because they always overlap. Okay, I'm gonna sort of aim for that spot. Backstitch a little. We're gonna hope for the best. Okay, so now I can come back over I'll take my pins out. You see those stitches? That's how your stitches should always look. Nice, big stitches. Okay. Ta-da! <laughs> I've never put two of them together before. That's pretty funny. Okay. So now I can go and I will just cut these off. Okay. These are not the best scissors for trying to take little bitty cuts with. Let me get my other little kais. These will work better. Okay, if you have those from Mores, which I have some more too, they work really well for this. Okay, you take teeny tiny little stitches or cuts. Okay, there we go. It's a little bit less mess that way. They're gonna come together and ta-da. Okay, so now I'm gonna sew this down and we'll flip it over. Okay, then we'll just sew that whole edge. I'll show you how that's done. Okay, so now I'm gonna get this in here. What I have found is if you have, um, Oh, and this might be a good example. Actually, I'm going to do this. So this one, see, I didn't do it perfectly because it's two different fabrics um, and they don't work quite the same. So I have a little bit of extra here, okay? So I can feel like I would have to like pull this down. So what we're going to do, because this is where problems come in for people, is I'm going to pin this and I'm actually going to sew it from the other side. So I'm going to pin this in place with a couple of little... Um, fluffy points in it, okay? And I'm gonna put that against my feed dogs because the feed dogs will move your fabric through faster than the walking foot, okay? That's why on the top you always get, a, that's why you get the little puff on the top is because the feed dogs are moving through fast. This is just kind of pushing it through. So I'm gonna start here. So you might be able to see, did I do it? There it is. You might be able to see there's my seam line right there, okay? So I'm gonna start sewing here. And I'm just going to sew forward and I'm going to let those feed dogs do their thing back there and try to get that fabric in. The one thing with doing it this way is I want to make sure that this got laid out flat underneath. Okay, I'm just going to sew it and I'm going to try to aim for this line right here so that now my bindings will match. Okay, so now I've got my, my whole seam goes across here, okay? So now I can flip it over this direction, have lots of fluff, you know how this goes, guys, okay? And now those are all sewn together. So any little extra, and I can see I have a little bit of puff in here and puff in here, it just fed it right in, okay? Oops, look, I even have a big old pleat right there. Look at that, ta-da, can you tell? Nope, leaving it there then. Okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's how that works. So any type, like if, but if you did this with the Cuddle 3, you'd have to take it out and redo it. So with Lux Cuddle, it's really nice because I'm like, oh, it's a little mistake. I'm just gonna hide it right in the binding and no one will ever know. Okay, <laughs> so now we're gonna turn it to this side. Now I'm gonna clip it. Okay, 
and that's because it was um, <laughs> I was just stitching too close to where I had sewn down the binding before. Okay. And then I'll show you this one because the Ziggy is good too. We also talked about the hide in the um, in the blog post, and the the hide is a nice one too. Okay, get that up there, and you can see like there's definitely a little bit of finagling that has to happen to get the fabric underneath the foot. Okay, so I'm going to do a little zigzag here, and then I'm going to do that same thing where I'm going to hold down my edge, just hope for the best. Okay. There's a little pleat in there. It's going to work out okay, I promise. Okay, and you can keep redoing. Um, all right, so were there, what, oh, Ellen asked, what is the little yellow ruler that I used? And I, I don't know. Uh, oh, I got it at a show. <laughs> so look, it's like a little, your business name here. So you may be able to find this at quilt shops. Um, and basically it has a little hole. I have a few of these where they have holes um, at the quarter, the half, and the five-eighths, I believe. Yep. And so you can stick it in there and find out where your needle is. So this works really well because you can see, bah, bah, bah. okay, goes right through it. So this is great because then you can um, make sure that you have the same quarter inch or same half inch on all your machines. Okay, it's a great, a great little tool. And I'm sure that lots of quilt shops have it because I think I got it at Quilt Market. Okay, so I'm just zigzagging here, going right along that edge trying to make sure that my cut edge is going to end up on this side of my zag, zig, whichever one that was. Okay. And then bring it over here. So I'm going to do this all the way to the end so you guys can just see what it looks like. Okay. Ta-da. All right. We'll lift that up. Okay. So this one is done with the light gray thread. You can barely see it there, but look at this. I can make all of those little gray threads go away. Ta-da! <laughs> it's kind of amazing. So this is really the trick part of all of this is getting that fluff to come back up and hide all of your stitches. Okay, <laughs> there's a little um, conglomerate there right there. Came together. Okay. Same thing, you're just going to fluff it up, neaten up those edges. Okay, same thing on the back. So you can see, this is one thing that people um, will often complain to me about is that the back looks really ugly. And I'm like, it does. I mean, that's, that's not pretty. Okay. I don't know if you guys can see quite how not attractive it is. It isn't. Okay. But I can come back over here with the um, stiletto and I can fluff this up and it will make that all nice and fluffy again. Okay. And then it makes it look so much better. So really the key for me, the key is just doing this little fluffer bit. Okay. And getting that nap nice and nice and even. More stitches you guys can see. Hide them all. So if you were doing something like this, like honestly, if I were doing a blue binding, I would just use blue thread so I wouldn't have to see it. But you'll see how easily it all hides in there versus, you know, having this showing. We don't want it to look like this. We want it to look like this. Okay. So super duper easy. All right. Let's see if there's any other questions. Do, do, do. Nope. Doesn't look like it. All right. If you have any, I'll answer them in the um, comments. So again, my favorites, okay, I love this stuff. This is the, um, the weave and this is the chenille, both super good. Oh, here's the, here's the hide. We ran out of time, didn't do it, sorry. But it works basically the same way as the Ziggy does, okay? Hide is just super good for it too. Honestly, these two I feel like are the easiest to work with when you're doing this. Here's the Cuddle 3 one. Okay, you remember the serpentine, the wider serpentine. This was the shell stitch. This was the smocking stitch. Okay, it kind of feels like a lot of work for not showing. <laughs> I think this is why I like the serpentine. And then the little zigzag on that one. So on the Cuddle 3, I recommend that you use a fancier stitch. It will also draw attention away from these little moments that happen. Okay, so if this happens on yours, this is really common. And it's because it's pushing the fabric forward just a little bit. So it happens to the best of us, truly. Okay, all right, I think that was it. I think we got them all. <laughs> we'll come back through and answer your questions. But really the key to binding is just to practice it. Go slow, use the stiletto, be very kind to yourself and practice. So one of the things that we have done in classes is, um, when I've done classes on binding, is that we have done it so that you just take, you make yourself a square. So make yourself like a 15, um, 
let's see, if you made yourself a 12 by 15 inch square, or rectangle, I guess it would be. So 12 inches by 15 inches, you just make that, you can take one strip of the cuddle, um, the Lux Cuddle, make yourself a binding strip. So 60 inches wide by one and three quarter inches wide, tall. Okay, you're gonna make one strip. You can use that one strip to bind it. Okay, so 12 by 15 and one strip of binding. That will bind all the way around and you can practice this. Well, you'll make just a teeny tiny little thing. If you do that a few times, you'll get better. The other thing that you can do is to put together a few, um, like a larger piece, then bind it and then cut off the binding, bind it again, cut it off, bind it again. And that's the way I've done it too. Um, so then you just practice and practice and practice and it will get better. So don't be afraid to use it. Think about the length of the nap, how much the stitch is gonna show, how much of the stitch is gonna fall onto the fabric that you have to like sort of like stitch behind or stitch blindly, okay? So if you think those things through, when you're making a choice on what you're gonna bind your quilt with, it'll make a big difference in how well your binding turns out. All right, so make sure, like I said, practice, okay? And then make wise choices when you do it. Um, we have a winner. The winner was Jill W. She was our winner today. And um, probably just send you a kit so you can practice your binding with that. Um, so make sure that you share the video again with your um, friends, with your sewing groups, all that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, we really want people to learn to love cuddle as much as we do. So um, if you share the love, it's really great. I appreciate it. Don't forget to join us on the I Love Cuddle Fabric page. So that's a Facebook group that a whole bunch of us are on and we get to share all the lovely things that people make and ask questions and share things. It's great. Um, so join us there. Um, we also have all of our videos are on YouTube and we're on Instagram and all of that good stuff. So you can join us. Also the blog. And the blog has all of this information. Um, well, probably a lot of this information. Um, he asked for tips and I always come up with more. Sorry, it's what I do. I can say more and more. So thank you very much for coming. I really appreciate you being here. Um, we'll be back tomorrow on fabric.com and we'll be talking about uh, cuddle quilting. So quilting with that on the back. And then next week we are back, and I can't remember, I think we're starting into our fall projects next week. So I guess summer is over for sure and we're gonna do fall projects starting soon. So thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you joining us for Sew Together Tuesday. And until next time, happy sewing. <laughs>